As the MCU keeps expanding, so too does its roster of stars. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 actors and actresses we want to join the Marvel Universe. But there was this little girl, and this guy talking to the moon, and- Enough! If you like this topic, check out Miss Mojo's list of the top 10 badass women in the MCU to see Marvel's most kick-ass female characters from both TV and film. Click on the link below. For this list, we'll be looking at popular actors and actresses who feel like a good fit for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and for whom we've selected specific roles. Number 10, Anna Kendrick, Squirrel Girl. In the often self-serious and weighty medium of comics, this Great Lakes Avenger is a breath of fresh air, and one that has clearly connected with comic book readers, developing a devoted cult following of rabid fans. You're still innocent in my eyes. Marvel has claimed that they're not interested in making superhero movies, but rather adapting the source material to numerous film genres. Since the MCU already emphasizes comedy, why not take it a step further with a straight-up comedy that's low stakes, but big on laughs? Squirrel Girl could anchor this film, and with her cute looks, feisty personality, and acting talent, we can think of no one better to ensure the film's success than Anna Kendrick. That's awesome. Already, that's so amazing. No, that's such a good idea. How did I not think of that? Number 9. Dylan O'Brien. Nova. You rock, dude. You too. Well, less than me. Given that the Nova Corps was already introduced in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film, this intergalactic agent of law enforcement and superhero seems primed to join the MCU. Enter Dylan O'Brien. This young actor has more than proved himself capable of holding an audience's attention with star-making roles on TV's Teen Wolf and in the film series The Maze Runner. Regardless of whether they opted to introduce the first Nova, Richard Rider, or his successor, Sam Alexander, O'Brien looks young enough to pass as a high schooler. Of course, they could also retool the origin story to make him a university-aged hero. Either way, Dylan O'Brien fits the bill. You know what? I actually think I've heard of this. Number 8. Lake Bell. She-Hulk. This is against the rules! Not mine, buddy. Considering the legal baggage that must come with being the Incredible Hulk, Bruce Banner could benefit from having a lawyer for a friend. Or better yet, a cousin. Jennifer Walters not only shares her cousin's ability to take on a muscular green form, but, thanks to there being less gamma radiation in her blood, is capable of maintaining her own personality and intelligence when hulking out. An accomplished lawyer and crime fighter, she's quite the woman. To bring this character to life convincingly would require a certain finesse, and Lake Bell feels like the perfect candidate. Though better known for her indie roles, she's proven herself capable of great depth, even in comedic roles. Um... Um... <laughs> Number 7, Ethan Hawke, Moon Knight. As previously discussed, Marvel is committed to diversifying the types of films they make. Given some of the darker characters in their catalog, and after the fantasy epic of Doctor Strange, a supernatural thriller doesn't seem so far-fetched. Fans have been praying for a Moon Knight Netflix series for years, but why not a film instead? Ethan Hawke feels like the perfect man to make it happen. Bottom line is it's all timing with these things. Across his impressive filmography, he's proven time and time again that he's got the chops to play all manner of complex characters. And in this role, as the mentally unstable Mark Spector, he'd be playing multiple characters at once. You talking to the moon again? Of course. Isn't that who you're talking to? No. Number 6, Nikolai Coster Waldau, Adam Warlock. Few characters have been teased, predicted, or anticipated in the MCU like Adam Warlock. I think I shall call him. Adam. Whenever he finally graces us with his cosmic presence, we'd like it to be with Nikolai Koster Waldau wielding that power. For starters, it really doesn't hurt that Koster Waldau really looks the part. But more importantly, as he's proven beyond the shadow of doubt as Jamie Lannister, he's got the chops to play a character who audiences both love and hate simultaneously, which is a prerequisite for playing Warlock. A character known for making tough decisions and having repeatedly succumbed to the darkness, this is a hero tailor-made for a man of Coster Waldau's talents. Let's give them fair warning first. Number 5, Kevin Bacon, Korvac. A great hero named Kevin Bacon. He teaches an entire city full of people with sticks up their butts that dancing, well, it's the greatest thing there is. Kevin Bacon, Star-Lord's earthly obsession, has gotten far too much lip service to not be included in the MCU. We'd settle for a simple cameo that puts Quill and the Footloose star face to face, but if he's willing, we'd rather see Bacon get a proper role. Of all the possibilities, Korvac feels like the best fit. 
First off, it would be hilarious for Star-Lord to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a villain played by his hero. But more importantly, Korvac feels like a great villain for the Guardians. I can feel the power inside of me. With his overwhelming power set, he's an undeniably formidable foe, while his earthly origins would make for a nice connection to Star-Lord's own past. Number 4, Michael Fassbender, Doctor Doom. Doom does not surrender. With talks of 20th Century Fox merging into Disney, fans have been thinking long and hard about the properties in Fox's repertoire. And after seeing Fox give us two lackluster takes on this iconic villain, we think it's high time that Victor Von Doom receive a cinematic adaptation worthy of a character of his stature and reputation. Plus, it's a good excuse to get one of Hollywood's greatest character actors into the MCU. Michael Fassbender does menacing like few others can. The man is equally capable of chilling you to the bone with a threat or a smile. Now that's the sort of skill we need behind Doctor Doom's mask. That's the spirit. <laughs> Number three, Wesley Snipes, Blade. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Blade franchise was somewhat of an exercise in diminishing returns as far as quality is concerned, but most fans and critics agree that the leading man was not the problem. If anything, Wesley Snipes' Blade feels like a worthy precursor to the MCU. So much so that we'd happily see it casually brought into the fold. Snipes' previous adventures as the character could have been going on the whole time, a conflict that long predates the Age of Heroes and one which, until he makes his big debut, the Avengers remained blissfully unaware of. That being said, if Snipes is out, John Boyega should step in. Lay on me, what do I gotta do? Number two, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman. Husband and wife acting couples don't always work well together on the big screen, but after seeing A Quiet Place, cinema goers everywhere are sold on this fan favorite pair's chemistry, both off and on the screen. If Michael Fassbender were actually willing to sign up as Doctor Doom, you'd need talent of a similar caliber bringing to life the Fantastic Four. Our endorsement goes to John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. Make their family dynamic and the kids central to the stakes. Maybe they've remained in the shadows to protect their children, but are finally forced into the light by Doom. Who are we if we can't protect them? After multiple disappointing adaptations, it's time for the Fantastic Four to get their due. Number 1, Gary Oldman, Green Goblin slash Norman Osborn. There was only one true goblin, the Green Goblin! Though we're excited to see Tom Holland's Spider-Man facing off against some previously unseen villains, it feels inevitable that he'll eventually need to come up against his greatest nemesis, the Green Goblin. The thing is, Willem Dafoe already set the bar very high. Godspeed, Spider-Man. <sighs> in order to revisit the character of Green Goblin and do it justice, we're going to need an Academy Award-winning actor to take this iconic businessman slash maniac to new heights. And when you're looking for a sure thing, there's no better person to turn to than Gary Oldman. A decorated actor who has earned praise in both stern and maniacal roles, he's the best man for the job. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.